Hello, Mana TV viewers. Welcome back to Healthy Life the Vegan Way. I'm your host, Dr. Kalindi Bakshi. Friends, Healthy Life the Vegan Way is a series in collaboration with World Vegan Vision, a not for profit organization whose mission is to encourage a kinder and compassionate way of life. Their mission is to increase awareness about three aspects of veganism your health, animal welfare, and conservation of the environment. Today, we are back with Dr. Shrenik Shah and Dr. Moise Kasubai. For those who are new, Dr. Shah is a physician with over 35 years of practice in internal medicine. He has been a vegan over 20 years, and he has spread the love of veganism to many, many people around him. He has a very unique approach to treating patients. Dr. Pa Dr. Shah empowers his patients to take control of their own health just by eating the food that are right for them. Uh, a simple yet a very powerful tool, teaching them to take their health in their own hands. He's a firm believer in whole food plant-based diet. He guides his patients and people around him to let food be your medicine. He strongly recommends whole food uh, plant-based diet and, and lifestyle to prevent, reverse, and manage disease. Our next guest, Dr. Mois Kasubai, is an associate chair in an academic medical center. He is a firm believer in plant-based diet to reverse and manage chronic medical disease. Another great advocate for plant-based diet. In fact, he has taken his passion to the next level by engaging in policy making, um, you know, and to make plant-based diet more accessible to patients in hospital settings and in healthcare settings. And he encourages uh, plant-based diet, you know, addition of plant-based diet in schools. So. Uh, he is a very, very strong proponent at all different levels of plant-based diet. He is a physician advisor to healthcare technology corporations. So with Dr. Shah and Dr. Moyes, today we are going to talk about the benefits of plant-based diet to our brain. Medical science says that what we eat impacts not only our gut, but it also impacts the structure and function of our brain. Uh, did you know our brain is an energy intensive organ or structure? It takes about 20% of our calories that we eat to do something that we won't even, we don't even realize, you know, it takes us 20% of our calories to just think. So an individual eating 2000 calorie diet, you're spending 400 calories to do the heavy load of thinking. So that means it requires a constant pool of healthy nutrients to build, grow, repair the uh, brain cells of our neurons. Also a lot of antioxidants to reduce inflammation and to attack the chronic oxidative stress that our brain goes through. Um, you know, all these, uh, all the oxidative stress that also leads to aging to our brain and which eventually can lead to dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So today we are going to talk about the relationship between our gut and our brain. So in very recent days, in very recent years, a whole new field has emerged, a whole new field of nutritional neuroscience and nutritional psychiatry has emerged. You know why? Because of the, of the nutritional needs of our brain, because of the focus on the health of our brain. Um, did you know that bacteria in our gut talks to the neurons in our brain. What do you think, Dr. Moyes? Oh, absolutely, Kalindi. I mean, that's such an important thing. And a lot of people may not realize that most of our neurotransmitters, those happy hormones, happy neurotransmitters, that's like right. serotonin and dopamine are actually created in the gut and created better in the gut if you eat actually plant-based nutrition and then travel up the vagus nerve into the brain and make you happy. So really, it truly, happiness truly starts in the gut. You know, that's lining your uh, GI tract, the gastrointestinal in, intestinal tract, has about a hundred million neurons. Isn't it amazing? So thinking about how our diet is connected to our emotions, you know, there are neurons in your gut. And these neurons in your gut, they constantly cross talk with your brain. And as Dr. Moyes said, serotonin, an important neurotransmitter, which regulates appetite, sleep, emotions, 95% of serotonin is produced in our GI tract. And so what do you say, Dr. Shah, does it make sense? Does this all make sense? Um, 
why and how our emotions are controlled by our uh, gut. Yeah, I see more on the practical side. I have a lot of patients. I mean, I see them with anxiety and depressions and invariably they have GI side effects. They have anxiety. So it related to the constipation, sometimes frequent bowel movements, diarrhea, stomachache, and, and it's basically irritable bowel syndrome. It's all linked to the wrong food, basically. So I tell them to fix the diet, increase the fiber intake and all those kind of things. So it does definitely make a major change. And serotonin, we know, is, a, is the happy hormone. So serotonin is elevates your mood. But uh, unfortunately, people who have the anxiety, depression, they have the lower end of the serotonin levels. Yes, absolutely. So eating, uh, so, you know, now that we've made that connection, we can also, we also know that our diet, fixing our diet, eating the right food, eating the happy food, eating the plant-based rainbow has tremendous effect on your gut health and therefore your brain health. So since we talked about serotonin um, and you know how it's linked to moods, it is linked to sleep, it's linked to appetite, everything. Let's talk a bit about, let's focus a bit about mood disorders, which are so prevalent you know, about their, it's, the numbers are astounding. About 17 million people in the United States at some point of, in their lives experience depression. It says diet fixes it. Diet is a big, big component of that. So um, Dr. Moyes, Dr. Shah, let's talk about how a plant-based diet and what is the relationship between you know, your mood and your food. I think I, can, I, may, I may start, Dr. Shah, if you don't mind. Uh, we know depression is a huge problem, as you just mentioned right now. And it consists of basically low mood and low interest. What we do as doctors, we give medications, right? And how many times are medications really effective? Only one out of three patients will benefit from the medications we give. But the other two patients who do not really benefit from the medication will yet get the side effects. And there are side effects, as Dr. Shah will know in his practice, which are horrendous, which are not, not good side effects. And the other thing is, even if you continue with the medication and you get better and then you stop taking your medication, 50% will relapse. So there'll be recurrence happening again in 50% of patients who have depression, who've taken the medication. So we're really not curing the problem. We are taking care of its symptoms. And what we have now in plant-based nutrition that we actually can able to control the symptoms, improve the mood by what you eat. And there are more and more studies over the last many decades that have shown a lot of benefit of having plant-based nutrition. And to just name a few out there, out there right now is one study was done in the United Kingdom I think there were civil servants, 3,500 of them. Uh, they were randomized. Half were given uh, you know, vegan, low-fat vegan diet. Another one were given your usual processed food of meat and dairy and sweets, et cetera. And they observed after five years. So they observed at least for five years, and they found the ones who had the processed uh, food had 59% increase in depression. 59%. So there's a huge amount of increase in depression. Then come back locally in the United States, we had a study where uh, they took Geico. Geico had some about 292 patients where there were control group and half got again weakened that. And what they found again is decrease in depression, decrease in anxiety, but more important than that, increase in productivity. So you're actually more productive, you're happier, you're healthier. And again, I if you're healthier, you're going to smoke less. You, if you're healthier, you're going to eat better food, really. Eat better. You're going to exercise right. more. more. So, uh, you know, there are studies that show that it's just so it's a, it's a great benefit overall. A lot of my patients come with an irritable bowel syndrome and they have a, you know, lose BM and things like that. And I, the first thing I tell them to is to start taking a high fiber diet. And many of them do feel wonderful after that. Once their gut gets stimulated, uh, gets taken care of, their, their anxiety and stress level goes down. And the SSRIs, like you mentioned, is a lot of them have frequent weight gains and sexual dysfunctions and and the, you know it frequently mood disturbances and all that. So it's very difficult to control all these anxiety depressions as an outpatient. I mean, of course, they end up with the psychiatrist, but in the real settings, that's not the life you want to have. So uh, a diet does play a major role, in no question about it. A lot of uh, you know, uh, plant-based uh, diet is rich in phytochemicals, right? And a lot of phytochemicals have, uh, you know, they release uh, smaller components um, you know, they are extremely uh, important in regulating uh, neural functional functions. 
So, uh, you know, there is an imbalance in neurotransmitters, even if there is neuroinflammation, um, these phytochemicals, um, you know, structurally and functionally, they alter the function and they actually help increase neurotransmitter levels have shown in certain studies, right? Like very simple foods and, you know, you like berries, for example, let's take that, they have a lot of antioxidants, right? And yep. they have a specific component, a specific compound, which actually increases the level of certain enzymes, which are, uh, you know, sorry, it reduces the level of certain enzymes, which are high in people, which have been shown that are high in people who are depressed or have depressive disorders. So, you know, uh, apples, grapes, green leafy vegetables, um, you know, dark chocolate. Yes, that also has a lot of benefits. Um, then. Another uh, is the, our omega-3 fatty acids, correct? Yeah, foods are high in, in omega-3, and that's been found to have a great, great brain health, uh, especially the walnuts and the almonds and, and uh, flax seeds are very high in omega-3. So they are very good uh, for the, the neural uh, development of your neuronal function. Uh, but what about also Western diet has been clearly linked in several studies with uh, attention deficit disorders, which is so prevalent in the in the teenagers and the, the link already has been established but it never gets it makes it to the billboards that do not eat the western diet but but people keep going and look for adderall and then this and then that and all that and millions of teens are still suffering they don't even make it to the offices of the doctors but they suffer attention deficit sometimes i have people in 40s and 50s even they come to see me and they say doc you know i'm just not performing very well and I tell them to change the diet and that really helps them a lot. So that study has been definitely clearly shown that the Western diet uh, has been linked with attention deficit. So that really makes your life very unstable and an instability, as you know, is anxiety and stress and depressions and all these sufferings. It's not worth it. Sure, and just, uh, just in interest for many Indians will be, uh, they actually compared saffron with Prozac and both were equal. So mm. saffron, of course, has no side effects. When Prozac, as you said, has a lot of side effects. Right. So, uh, you know, saffron is as good as Prozac. And the other thing that a lot of us uh, love to have every day in the morning is coffee. Coffee is great. Two to three, cup, two to three cups per day or even more than that it reduces depression, reduces suicide risk. Provided, again, you don't add sugar or you don't have sugar alternatives or any milk products or dairy products. <laughs> And no milk. <laughs> and no milk. It's just black coffee without sugar, without any other uh, alternatives. It's just uh, great for your mental health, really. So overall, uh, plant-based nutrition, anything right from plant has been uh, really beneficial for our brain. And what about this uh, latest study that came out in April about the diabetes? Uh, more than 10 years uh, history of diabetes, 48% increase in the risk of dementia. That's our next, that's the next one I was going to you yes. know, discuss, uh, Dr. Shah, Dr. Moyes, about uh, brain aging, neuroinflammation, and yes. how, you know, the aging brain leads to neuroinflammation. And there are so many studies in recent years, in recent five years, showing eating plant-based diet in fact, reduces the rate of, uh, you know, neuroinflammation and slows down dementia. So what do you say about that? The dementia catching up. And by the time I see them in that state, diabetes has been there for a long time. So whole food plant-based diet has been significantly known to reduce the diabetes by reducing your weight. Obesity disappears because in the whole food plant-based diet, it's not just the vegan, but it also more raw food uh, than anything else and no concentrated sweets, no soda, no juices, no fried stuff, no oils. And, and so this basically leads to a healthy lifestyle. I have patients who give up the concentrated carbs and their A1C is dropped from 7.9 to 6.2 without changing anything else. So there is def definitely a lot of benefit and the sugar is definitely neurotoxic. That's for sure. So in one, in the many, in the many complex ways, you know. Topic of discussion, the mind diet for Alzheimer's disease, right? Uh, mind diet is, uh, stands for Mediterranean, a combination of Mediterranean and DASH uh, intervention. And in 2015, uh, the re uh, research paper that was published, it showed that it's uh, patients on mind diet, they, uh, if they followed uh, moderately, the diet, it reduced their risk, 35% risk for Alzheimer's disease. And if they followed it by the book, 
53% reduction in the risk for having Alzheimer's disease. And do you know what mind diet is? It's about 80 to 85% plant-based diet. Um, it asks the mind diet strictly, um, you know, is prescribed not, uh, prescribes not to have uh, high foods in high, which are high in saturated fat. Um, avoid animal uh, fat as much as possible and focus on whole grains, uh, leafy green vegetables, lots of fruits, nuts, seeds. So, it, and that diet is among the top diet, top brain diet. The problem with dementia right now is there is no cure. There is no treatment for it. And all we can actually do is prevention right now. Prevention, uh, right. We know there are around 73,000 studies done on the, uh, dementia and Alzheimer's dementia specifically. And till now, they haven't found a cure for it. So that tells you that what all we can do is prevention, pre preventing it as much as we can, really. And major guidelines for major societies, we talk about Alzheimer's, talk about plant-based nutrition as a way to prevent it from happening. And just to give a bit of statistics, if you go back and you do a brain biopsy on 50-year-olds, 50% 50 have the early signs of dementia in that. And you go back when they were 20 years of age, do you find 10% of them had already dementia set in there, dementia findings set in out there. So the other point that comes a lot about dementia and, you know, Indians being a little fatalistic say, hey, it's, this is going to happen to me. You know, it's, I'm, I've got genetics. It's because of genetics, really. And a lot of studies, and I can tell you migration studies. So if you look around the world, the dementia varies 10 times all around the world. The Japanese men who come, who come and live in the United States have an increased risk of dementia because they start having Western diet. Nigerian men who come to the United States now have four times increase in uh, dementia because they come to this country. So migration shows that hey, you have the same gene pool, but when you travel and come and start having the Western diet, you start having more amount of dementia. Now, we, there is a genetic variant, right, called apolipoprotein E. Uh, Apo right. Right, which can predispose, which causes, I mean, it creates proteins, but increases the cholesterol in the brain cells and causes damage. But do you know who has the highest level of this uh, variant of apple or lipoprotein E4? Is the Nigerians, but they <laughs> have the lowest risk of dementia. So this tells you it's what we eat. It's not the genetics. Yes, it may play a little part, but it's what we eat is what causes us to fade away. And this is a, this is a disease that we fade away. It's a long sunset. Your physical bodies are present, but we have lost the memory. We have lost our contact, our faculties, our ability to function in a normal manner. So it's, it's, it's quite scary. And then it's a major uh, social burden. I mean, there's no question about it. Dementia, you know, it's sometimes, sometimes it, like people get a heart attack and die is, is one thing, but people, they survive every single day with dementia. And it's a tremendous burden on the family and the society in general. So it's just a shame that dementia really catches up. And it's something which is very preventable. And uh, we are looking at also studies that were done in this country. In this, we, are talking, we talked about migration studies. Look at studies in India. India has the lowest dementia risk because Indians generally have mainly plants birth protein in the rural area. So they compared Pennsylvania, where they found 19 out of 100 will have dementia, while compared to a rural India, where three out of 100 will have dementia. But, you know, we in the cities, in India especially, we're going towards Western diet. So we yeah. are now taking the bad habits of uh, the Western right. food and are going to suffer in the future of cognitive yeah. decline, which is, and you, you're seeing that, you're seeing diabetes, you're seeing obesity, you're seeing hypertension increase tremendously out there. So Just like China. Health is de deteriorating in India because of adoption of Western diet. Just like China, the Beijing and Shanghai are becoming just like a cosmopolitan city with so much Western influence. But you go into the rural China, still things are not so bad. People, maybe farmers, maybe 80, 85, 90, and they're still functioning totally normally. So, Absolutely. Right. And there was a large study done with the Harvard Women's Health Study, which was started in 1993, and it has around 40,000 participants in that. And when they saw that if you eat increased saturated fat, and you, and, and you all know saturated fat comes from meat and dairy, you have 70% increase in forgetfulness and cognitive decline. So even in the United States, the more fat you eat, the more likely you're going to start forgetting early, you're going to start cognitive decline, and of course, leading to dementia later on. So yes. basically, it covers uh, the, everything. So from mood disorders, like Kalindi said, anxiety, depression, 
uh, attention deficit disorder all the way to dementia. So all the spectrum of mental illnesses, the, the significant preventive effect can be brought in in life by the whole food plant-based diet. So that's and one. that also that also early on, you know, it, it yes. is as a prevention because uh, dementia or when Alzheimer's, there is as because there is no cure for it. It is prevent, right. prevent, prevent. Right. So start on. Uh, start early on with a plant-based diet, you know, it actually nourishes your brain. It has the perfect nutrients to create a healthy environment for your brain cells to grow, to repair, and to, uh, and, you know, to flourish. Um, that's, that's the key. There is nothing else to it, right? Um, and the reason, you know, one of the reasons uh, that, that the, uh, you know, mind diet or any diet that has been prescribed to have a healthy brain environment is because plant-based diets are full of flavonoids. They are full of phytochemicals that, uh, again, as a, you know, I'm going to repeat again, that they give you, give the best nourishment. Forget the salmon, forget the oily fish that, you know, they're all, you've been always we have been bombarded with that. Yeah, you need salmon and fish omega for omega threes. We have everything that we need from nuts, seeds, from you know vegetables, from leafy greens to nourish your brain. So, uh, and the fish comes have, with uh, cholesterol. <laughs> Don't forget. Yes, absolutely. We have a filet of, of salmon is 112 milligrams of cholesterol. So yes, it has something good about it. No question about it. Omega three, but it brings in. A lot of bad things versus the flax seeds and and the nuts they, they don't do any kind of harm because they have zero cholesterol and so they they help with you know reducing inflammation in the brain and dementia alzheimer's or all the, uh, any disorder so in a, a plant-based diet uh, which is a whole food plant-based diet which is low in um, you know probably the, there is no saturated fat here but uh, you know high in nutrients is the key to a healthier brain. Um, so what I would say is start paying attention on how eating different foods make you feel. And you will know that right away. Be conscious, be mindful of what you're eating. And your mind will tell you, your body will tell you, this is not the right food for me, or this is amazing. I feel so good after eating this. Right, doctors? What do you yeah, say? I mean, that's one thing I have noticed. Again, this is not an experimental thing. It's not like something you can do a study. But, but one thing I know that it, it is definitely a major step. It's definitely a major step to go away from your mind because mind desires. The more, uh, you know, spicy foods and more uh, sugary food and more fried stuff you eat, more desires are generated. And that kind of keeps your mind moving all the time. Versus if you go on a, just a simple raw food diet, healthy diet. Yes, in the beginning, it's a big change, but little by little, your mind starts calming down. And, and frequently, again, I have spoken to so many people who have become vegan and they cannot explain why they feel so good. They just feel so happy. And I know because I'm into spirituality for a long time, it is very difficult to go beyond the mind. But once you do, Beyond the mind is a, is a kingdom of the consciousness. You are just connecting with the pure joy, which is found only in your soul level, where the mind does not interfere. Thought patterns disappear. All the stress and suffering of the, the sansar disappears, and you have a lot of peace. Even Gita says that. The sattvic ahar, Krishna says, sattvic ahar, sattvic vichar, and sattvic achran. You, sattvic food. Sattva is, means what? Sattva means purity. Purity means what? Like a child born in a village is pure. He comes to the city and then hence <laughs> things go apart. And it's like people in the villages are held nice and sattvic, but they come to the city, they change. The kid grows up, he loses his innocence. So sattvic, so if you pluck an apple from a tree, that's sattvic because it's created by the nature. But if you bring it home, add a lot of sugar, add a lot of fats and everything make make an apple pie the sattva is gone carrot is sattvic carrot cake is not so i explain to my patients if you really want to have a soothing life and very happy enjoyable life cut out this food is the one of the worst addictions that you can even have 
But and we don't realize. But if you analyze this scenario, you can realize that the more fried stuff and sugary snacks you eat, your mind is always going to be restless. So I know why people, when they go on a whole food plant diet, they feel so wonderful. Even they cannot explain. But I know the mechanism. This is how it works. So that yeah. helps go beyond the mind. It's a very simple way of explaining, but it's really causes a major, major, total change in your lifestyle. So go vegan. Go whole food plant based diet. <laughs> Excellent, doctor. And you know, nothing. I don't have anything more to add to what Dr. Shah said. The only thing I would remind you is something that all three of us say: cut down on, especially for your, you know, for your body, and mostly because because the focus of today's topic is your brain health. Cut down on processed food. One thing I would like to add. I'm sorry. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Go ahead. But the thing is that if you go for any diets, I mean, most of the people go on a diet to lose weight and we have tons of other diets, Mediterranean diet, and then keto diet and this diet and dash diet and all those things. But this is the only diet which says avoid animal foods. Now, again, uh, and subconsciously, when you start avoiding the animal foods, something tells you that you're helping that animal by not consuming these products you letting them go free. And that is one of the biggest joys in a very subtle way. Right now, they will not realize. But once they go on a vegan diet, they realize that there is, comes an additional benefit, not just to your body, but to the animals which were you know, contributing to your part of your food. Now they are released. They, you don't have to make them suffer anymore. So that's another something. You feel good that you did something good for something. That is only present built into only the vegan diet. Sorry to cut you off, but I thought it was a very important. But uh, Dr. Shah, you gave a great, uh, you know, that's a great way to end today's um, <laughs> discussion on brain health and, be, and vegan diet. So our brain also wants vegan food. And, you know, we have to make conscious effort to include whole food, plant-based um, diet, whole grains, leafy greens, um, and fruits and vegetables containing an antioxidants, nuts and seeds containing omega-3 fatty acids, um, all these with, um, you know, geared with all these nutrients, your brain will thrive and it will fight against neuroinflammation and aging and give you happiness. Give, you know, all the happy neurotransmitters will be released. So the answer once again is healthy life, the vegan way. Thank you everyone for joining.